So let me start with a bit of a recap. And the reason why we have invited Kalpit is that Kalpit passed out actually last academic year. Okay. And he is already a successful entrepreneur. And what I wanted him to do was to share with you his journey. Remember, it's good to see Steve Jobs after he became, after Steve Jobs became Steve Jobs. Okay. And he became rich and famous. Or Bill Gates after he became Bill Gates. Or Mr. Ambani after he became Mr. Ambani. Very rich, very famous. But I think it's also important to understand what does it look like in your first year of entrepreneurship when you're just first out of college and is it possible? Okay. So I think it's very important to understand that what does that first year look like when I start on a journey? And the reason that I have invited Kalpit to be here is that he can describe to you almost the first 12 to 18 months of his startup and the struggles that many of you will face. And I know that Kalpit himself has faced is very familiar to very similar to startups around the world. So yesterday I was talking to a startup in MIT, MIT Boston. Okay. Last week also I was talking to another entrepreneur who is coming into MIT, but he's, she's ex NASA, ex SpaceX, and now with a very large corporation and entering, coming into the MIT entrepreneurial program. Okay. I think one of the things that keeps coming out is that, and you ask that same question to Kalpit when he speaks, is that more than the technology prowess, more than the, the skills that you learn as electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, physics, chemistry, etc., it is equally important to develop certain skills. Okay, And certain skills certain attitudes and therefore if you look at the class just to recap uh, this is a study of why startups fail it's a no-brainer startups fail because there's no market demand for the product whatever you think whatever your prof tells you whatever your guide tells you whatever your lab or ta tells you ultimately the customer will decide whether it will succeed or fail as an entrepreneur if there's no market need everything falls apart you run out of cash because they're not selling any product you don't have the right team because the team you know, you can't pay your team and there's conflict in the team. Someone else means while is, you know, succeeding, but you are failing and so on. So, so when Kalpit speaks, ask him these questions. Okay. And he's faced all of these problems. Recourse here is not me. It's not Dr. Nishant. It's not any of the TAs or any, he can only show you the way. The real course is your customers. And I've seen in classes who have treated this as a you know, basically a theoretical course and during the COVID years, especially they've treated it more as a PowerPoint and presentation course. And there are some people, and we will have one example today when Kalpit speaks, okay, who have not focused on the PowerPoint and the presentation, but he has focused on the customer. Okay. And he has gone out and done the things which I'm asking you to do. So many people ask me, okay, are, and I asked you the same question, can entrepreneurship be, are entrepreneurs born or can entrepreneurship be taught? And my answer is that it's neither. Entrepreneurship, I don't think entrepreneurs are born. Nobody is born saying, oh, I'll be a great entrepreneur. They become entrepreneurs. And I don't think entrepreneurship can be taught. Whatever be the PowerPoints, whatever be the lectures, whatever be whoever tells you, whatever YouTube videos you watch about Bhavi Shagarwal or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or Mr. Ambani or Mr. Adani or any of them, okay, they'll not make you an entrepreneur. So entrepreneur can't be taught as well. Entrepreneur has to be learned. Entrepreneurship has to be learned. You have to learn entrepreneurship by doing entrepreneurship, by becoming an entrepreneur. And the people who will help you become an entrepreneur are these people. So in many ways, they are the course faculty. Again, as I said, you will start with some insight. You'll identify a problem, try to solve the problem. Then you realize you're solving the wrong problem. I know because uh, when Kalpit, since he's speaking today, Kalpit, please share. I think he and I actually he started off on some other project before he came to Akad Boost. And he had a lot of discussions with me. And I was telling, do you really want to get into it? Are you too late? There's already Baijus, there's great learning, there's Akash, there's resonance, there's all these other guys. Do you really want to get into it? And you know, he was very clear. So he pivoted out from what he was doing in class into creating a cut boost and you'll see, just, you'll see just how successful he is in just 12 to 18 months time. So you have to keep, you know, going through this iterative circles. The other thing you should try and capture from all the speakers who come, you know, the last speaker, um, who was Mr. Milind 
Gopi Kare, who spoke to you today, and there are some more guest speakers will come. Ask them the question, what is important? All of you are IIT Bombay students. Okay, obviously your JE ranks are very high. Your academic excellence is very high, no doubt about it. Your innate intelligence is very high. But is that enough? Is that enough to become an entrepreneur? And I've talked this, and we're forcing you to do some of these things. So how important is my electrical engineering degree for entrepreneurship versus my leadership skills? Okay. How important is my ability to influence people in a TED talk? Ask that question to Kalpit because he's done TED talks. How important is it for me to be able to enroll students for into my startup? And how do I market? You know, ask that question to Kalpit. You know, how does he market his 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 platform, Akad Boost? How what does he do on social media? How many followers does he have, okay, in YouTube, or link, or how many people are following him on the Twitter, and how many follow people are you know listening to him on LinkedIn, and how does he funnel a lot of those um, people who are following him into his package, into his platform, okay, and how how has his platform evolved, product design, so you know ask him those questions. In terms of just so you understand how important is my technical prowess, my natural intelligence versus some of these other skills which are listed here. I think the mindset of our educational system, school, college, coaching class, IIT itself, MTech, VTech is very academic and that's good if you want to be a professor, that's good. If you want to join and be an R&D researcher, that's good if you want to be an employee and join a company. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, every moment you have to think business, not PowerPoints, not formulas, not research, not labs, but think business. Because forget the name called startup. A startup is also a business. And business rules apply, not academic rules, not research rules. Business rules apply for a startup. You have to be aware of the laws. You have to be aware of sales and profits and, and all of this, which will teach you. Second thing is your success in the academic system is primarily led by, you know, um, how brilliant you are. And that decides your CPI and your grade and your JE rank and your department, etc. And I think Kalpit is already employing, if I'm not mistaken, lots of people. So I think it is also not his JE rank one that he was the first, you know, uh, in JE rank one that he scored the 360 out of 360 in JE. But I think increasingly Kalpit can share how important it is for him not to score the 360 out of 360, which is important, but how important is it for his him to manage his team and then how to manage his customers. Okay. Shakti, is it okay because I see you moving around? Is there a problem? No, sir. Where do I keep it? Okay. So I talk here, right? Yeah. Okay. So so hold on, just just before I pass on to you. Okay. okay. Um just in terms of the course, where you are now, remember how the course is structured? You have started with customer discovery. Some of you have talked to customers, we know that. And many of you will not talk to customers. Okay, and if you don't talk to customers, make a brilliant PowerPoint. In, the, in, a, in an entrepreneurial context, it's useless. You've just wasted your time. So do not create PowerPoints out of, you know, just three, four of you talking to each other. Go and talk to the customer. Okay, we have taken you through the customer discovery process. We, we have talked to you about how to identify a customer value proposition. We have talked to you and Milin, Professor Milin uh, Kopikar in the last class talked to you about how to important, uh, how to create solutions. Okay. Remo, just to remind you, ultimately the customer have to vote for you. The customer have to tell you that are you, is your solution better, cheaper, more satisfying? Okay. So um, you have to make sure that your your product or your solution 
either performs better or helps the planet, which means that you're doing something for the national missions of India or helping people or um, if you look at convenience, um, you know, wallets, Swiggy, aggregators, UPI, you know, the very large businesses created out of convenience. So make sure that you're fulfilling one of those checklists. We talk to you about how to create your value proposition. And even if you're collecting donations, okay, you may be, you know, you're, you may be raising funds from IIT Bombay, but the question is, do you have a value proposition which is targeted towards the donors? IIT Bombay is a big brand. Okay. Doesn't mean everybody will, will donate to IIT Bombay. Google is a big brand, but Google is not so big in search. Uh, in, 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 in social, in social media, Google is great in search. Doesn't mean that Google will be a big, um, food, food delivery service. Okay. So make sure that you're targeting a value proposition to a customer. We talked that we talked about product development and I think one of the challenges we'll face as an engineering student is that all of you will be comfortable with lab, okay? And lab will look like. Physics lab, and chemistry lab, and I've come to IIT. And you have done some small experiments in a small lab. And that will be enough for you to pass your exam, write a paper and do all of this. Okay, and this is what your lab will look like. But if you want to start, you have to go beyond to prototyping, checking with the customer, and then creating millions of pieces. You have to think like this. As, as students, you are thinking like this. And a lot of people, because they are so used and they have not even seen factories and plants in the real world, they've only seen classrooms and coaching classes, etc. You have to go out and see, you know, large scale factories where 100 people work, 1000 people work, 10,000 people work. It's all in the mind. And then you have to create those prototypes, which you talked in the last class. Looks like, works like, feels like. And then in words, wireframes wire and in working prototype. I call these the three W's. So with that preamble, let me hand over to Kalpit. Okay, um, as, as I think as a, I've already written to in my introductory note about his background. He's just uh, 12 to 18 months out of IIT Bombay. Okay, he's got an exceedingly well academic career. Okay, as I said, he was JE All India Rank 1 and he, per, he scored a perfect 360. I think he was the first and therefore he's still in the Limca Book of Records. Um, but as he has said often, and I'll probably, he'll probably say it today, what I think makes him outstanding in my opinion is that on day one, he was determined to be an entrepreneur. And there are other students we have seen who have given up those storied jobs with a Google or a Facebook or any of those respected large companies or Tata. And when I asked him in my first class, okay, um, Kalpit, do you want to um work for who's who's your dream job you know is it google is it microsoft is it facebook is it tata is it godrex and he told me very clearly i don't want to work for them i want to create the next google or the next facebook or the next microsoft i asked some of you the same question okay so all of you need to think as you finish your btech mtech phds etc will you be hunting for jobs will you be creating jobs will you be interviewing for tata's godrage reliance or you know ola or microsoft google or will you create the next ola or the next uber or the next tata or the next reliance or the next so i think in kalpit ask him those questions what is his motivation? What is his driving? What is the vision? So with that, let us give a, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to request all of you to invite um, 
Kalpit to stage with a round of applause. He has flown down from Rajasthan. Okay, so he has flown down, um, and he's taking time off to come and talk to us. And we'll be recording this video. So I've requested Kalpit that he doesn't only address the few people in the room, but he he has sought permission to post it in his social media handles, and we will post it on a CD handle. So his audience may well be hundreds of thousands. Okay, okay. So over to you, Kalpit. Uh, sure, thank you, sir. Uh, so I'll first of all uh, give a brief introduction of uh, myself, what I do, and then we'll have a brief discussion about how I did it and uh, what I the path which I exactly followed. Uh, so first of all, I'll talk about what I do and uh, how how I built it, and then we'll have a brief brief discussion of maybe we can have a question and answer kind of a session. Uh, maybe we can have maybe a dialogue kind of thing where I can ask you some questions or something like that. Okay. So uh, I started a so I work on a company called Acadboost Technologies Private Limited. It was incorporated in 2019, and uh, we basically do three things. So there are quite a few revenue verticals, but the most like the most well-known one and the biggest one is our online course selling business. Okay. So we have online courses for three things. Uh, first is school examinations that is for students who are in class 9th till 12th okay so they have their school exam board exams all these right so that is one vertical which we have second one which is a larger vertical is our entrance exam preparation one where we help students prepare for exams like je and neat and all these ntac olympiads etc and third one is uh, where all of you you can also check it out it's for college students who want to upskill themselves okay so there are platforms like udemy and all we have a different business model than them, but it's basically that where you can learn skills like coding and all of that stuff. Okay, so how it all started? So it all started back in 2017 when I got uh, the rank one in my JE exam in 2017. I'm I was the first person to score full marks, and in the 360 uh, marks format, I am still the only one. After that, they have changed the exam, I guess. Uh, so because of that, I gained a bit of popularity on social media. A uh, uh, few people started. You know, asking me those questions. Kisi ka bhi IIT nikalta hai, to sabse pehli chiz kya hoti hai? All of your friends might have also asked you ki, you know, you have some cousin who is in 11th or 12th ki bhai kaise padhai kare, right? They all ask you these questions, right? So I got these questions uh, like in maybe 10 or 100 times of that because my Facebook page and all they had started growing a lot uh, since my result had come. Uh, so I started posting about entrance exam preparation. So I had cleared a bunch of exams like uh, your NTSC, KVPY, and uh, obviously JE. So I started posting about them on my Facebook page back when Facebook was a thing. Maybe something like uh, how to prepare for JE, what books to study, you know, all these very basic things which every aspirant, uh, like everyone asked those questions. So this was all completely casual. It was just me. I was what 17 or 18 at that time, first year student. Just like uh, so, is there anyone who is in first year here? Okay, no one. So like I was a first year student and I was just posting it because people were liking it. Nothing, nothing more than that. Okay, and uh, this thing was growing. I started posting on Quora as well, and I started posting on YouTube as well, and it was all about academics only. That that's it. Okay. And this was in 2018, by the way. Nowadays, I think there are like 40 or 50 people who make uh, some kind of videos from IIT, right? But at that time, like I was the only guy from IIT who was doing this. And it was a very uncommon thing to do, okay? Uh, like uh, I even got a bit ridiculed for it, Ki, bhai, what are you doing? Nowadays, it's a bit common thing. Uh, nowadays, it's a, a very established thing to do. It's a very established sector, Ki, okay, uh, people make uh, some kind of content online for business reasons or whatever but back then not a lot of people were doing it okay especially not in the education field so i was doing it and uh, it also started making me a bit of money uh, like so you guys are aware that if you have some uh, blog or some youtube channel you can make money from it uh, they pay you some ad uh, like you can run ads on it and you can sell some products on it as well so so there's something called affiliate marketing if you heard where if you sell a if you let's say you have you make a blog post on let's say cameras okay and you say ki, okay these 10 cameras are good and then you link those cameras ki, okay uh, you know you can purchase these cameras from here then they gave you a cut of money so i was doing this small small things and i was making some amount of money and this was me in first and second year okay so this was not some earth shattering amount of money but it was good for a second year student and everything was going well and uh, then my internship season came in second year right so a lot of people go through this whole 
resume making thing and you know you uh, ask your seniors and your professors for verifications ki you know you do all of those things so uh, at the time so this so we'll go back a bit so i always had this thought in my mind ki, you know i want to start my own company even if you look up my j interviews so they ask you right ki, which company you want to join even then back in 2017 it's still on youtube i said ki, i don't want to join a company i will start my own company that's what i said in that interview and uh, it was like in my mind ki bhai job to i don't want to do and in that internship season like 99% it was confirmed now it was like 100% i don't want to do a job because i saw everyone running around and making these resumes and i just didn't like this process like uh, i will talk about it a bit more uh, in, in more detail later on but i just didn't like this whole process that you know i am doing some internship i'm working for someone and then pay me some money i could have done that stuff myself you know i used to think like that a lot Uh, so i didn't uh, make any resume in my second year i didn't enroll for any internships and i didn't even make an id on the placement portal at that time right and partly it was also because i was already making some money and it was probably more than the usual uh, stipends given in cse to second year students so i didn't do any internships in my second year and then i had a thought in mind so uh, this is winter 2018 i guess yeah winter 2018 and i was in my third semester winters and i thought ki okay now i'm not doing internships to ab kuch startup karte hain okay i had this thought and i was doing all this uh, posting about academics things on side okay so i thought okay what can i start i uh, thought of two or three ideas first thing which i thought of was a discussion like uh, platform something like reddit uh, and i even worked on it i created uh, so uh, you know i was uh, like a first second year student so us samay you don't know how to make apps and all you you like i was alone i didn't have some massive fundings or anything i didn't have any business knowledge at that time nor any like second year csu like they don't know much about all this right so i just created some whatsapp groups for discussion ki you know people can discuss and i told all my followers ki okay you can check them out i have created this discussion ka platform something like that but obviously it didn't have a revenue model and all it didn't work then i thought of making a doubt solving app because a lot of people used to ask me doubts right so i thought why not connect these people and you can post your doubts but again it was a bit difficult for a second year cs like i was a third semester cs student at that time so it was a bit difficult for me to make and then i thought ki what more can i do and then i thought maybe i should formalize this whole j guidance thing which i'm doing okay i thought maybe i should make a place where we can talk more about uh, guidance for different exams because this is a very big market like even you guys ask your seniors ki you know how is this course how is that course how to prepare for internships how to prepare for placement you all have these questions right similarly a class 11 student has his own set of questions even a mtech student has his own set of questions right so i thought of making this platform where you can means basically i just formalized my social posting thing okay and i booked the website academyboost.com and i started doing the same thing which i was doing on youtube and on other platforms i started doing it on that okay and then i spent the next almost one ish year growing that uh, website traffic okay so yeah so growing a website traffic is a slow and a, it's a cumulative process okay the more you work on it the more it grows so i posted a lot like 2019 it was all about posting 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 something about j and by then i was entering my third year so i knew a bit of cs as well right so thoda bahut i started posting about cs as well ki you know how to get started with c++ and all and i had a few friends and contributors volunteers as well who were posting and the website's traffic was growing okay i think it it was reaching around 30 50000 something like that views per month which is a lot right and uh, around that time i had enrolled in the entrepreneurship courses as well uh, maybe we'll talk about that a bit later because there's another story which we can talk about which sir discussed earlier about the other thing we were working on Uh, so in 2019 i kept on posting and the website and my channel and they were all growing okay and i was building a very huge traffic and name in the community for mostly for j preparation and also for computer science and you know all these things so in 2019 uh, the third year internship season had come okay and by then things were going very nice the traffic and the revenue of all the things which i was doing was also growing in november 2019 i thought ki maybe i should do something more okay because see making money from uh, ads and uh, you know affiliates all this is nice but you don't really make the kind of like you don't make big money by doing these things okay you need to have a product of your own and uh, so i thought in 2019 ki maybe i should 
launch a real product, something which actually sells, not, not just relying on others' product for a business, right? And I thought, what can I do, okay? So I set myself a target of uh, some y, x rupees, okay, Ki I have to make x rupees. By end of 29, I set a target and I have to think of ways to do that and I have to do this with the existing audience which I have, okay? And uh, around that time, so I thought, what's the most obvious thing I can do? And I discussed with a few friends and all and I thought, Ki, you know what? So this, this is November 2019 and the JE exam of 2020 was approaching at that time, okay? And like 70% of my audience was people who are preparing for their exams, right? So I uh, thought, so I just conducted a few polls and I said, Ki, you know, I'm interested in creating a, a online course related to JE examination. Are you interested? And this is 2019, by the way. Nowadays, everyone and their mom and dad and their grandpa are making online courses. But in 2019, this was not even an industry, okay? This is like inexistent, basically. So this was a very remote idea, but I saw some people in the US who are uh, making their online courses and selling them to their uh, to their audience okay so i thought why not try it in india okay at that time there were only very big companies who were doing this online course business and they were selling products at like 70000 80000 per year like that kind of ticket price i thought that can we do something like reduce the ticket price a bit and then see if people are interested because that was a completely inexploited market no one was in that market everyone who was selling online courses they were selling them at 80000 1 lakh 1.5 lakh something like that okay uh, so i started working very hard on a small course for je 2020 preparation like it was a last month uh, revision or crash course kind of a thing and i worked really hard in 3 months 3 weeks uh, this was winter break of 2019 i guess yeah winter break of 2019 and uh, I just conducted a lot of polls with my audience and asked, should I include this, should I include that and I tried to create the best thing I can in the lowest price possible, okay. So I launched three courses at the time, like uh, I created one full course thing and this was just me creating everything, okay. I had no teachers, nothing, okay. It was just, uh, uh, it was like a solopreneurship kind of thing, okay, he just uh, one man show kind of a thing. So I created that course and I launched three courses like tiered uh, pricing. One course cost rupees three thousand, another one cost rupees five thousand, another cost seven thousand. Now this was massive because beyond this you can only buy seventy, eighty thousand courses. There is no course in the market which cost rupees ten thousand or less. Okay, I was the first one who launched such courses, and I expected that maybe they will sell some amount of uh, sell uh, a few copies, and I will make uh, you know that X amount that I wanted to make that year. Okay. And uh, to my surprise, three or four thousand students pre-registered for those uh, courses and quite a few of them bought them as well, okay. And I ended up making that X amount of money in like 20 days, which I wanted to make in the entire year. And then I thought that this is a really big opportunity because people clearly have a demand for it, okay. And uh, then I incorporated the company, Academus Technologies Private Limited, because once you make a certain amount of revenues, you have some government compliances and all you have to uh, make. So it didn't make sense to do the business on my own name. So I registered a company and I started doing, so I thought ki maybe I should expand upon this, okay. And then uh, like 2020 had come and my sixth semester had started. So sixth semester in computer science is like, and by the way, all this I was doing while doing my CS degree, okay. Uh, so that was very hectic two years for me. And sixth semester in CSE is like the most hectic thing you can imagine because there are a lot of courses and I was overloading courses as well because I wanted to finish my degree early to focus completely on the business. So sixth semester 2020, it was uh, very heavy on me. I used to work a lot and then I thought ki, since my crash course has done well, maybe I will create a full course, okay? And this was uh, just me creating courses and uh, marketing it to my audience online, okay? This, this, is, this is a very, very simple business model which a lot of people uh, follow now. But uh, yeah, it was doing well. So I thought ki, I, I will double down on it, okay? So now I worked for three months and I created a full, complete, like a more complete JE preparation course. Okay, till now it's only JE, nothing more than that, okay. Sing, single product to one audience, one person, nothing, okay. Uh, the thing I want you to learn here is key, simple things work. You don't have to complicate things, okay. I didn't create my own app. I used a platform. It charges around 5% of the revenue. I used a platform, didn't make my own app. I was a CSE student, I knew keep websites and all I can make, but I knew ki the kind of traffic which it will have, I will not probably be able to handle it myself. So I rented 
company which creates course hosting platforms simple things okay one j course uh, one person creating it to one audience nothing complicated it was doing better than 99% startups okay profit generating company like no complexities in it okay so i created that uh, full length course and i launched it in around march 2020 uh, like the first half of march 2020 this is before lockdown so it sold a lot more copies than before because earlier i was selling to j 2020 aspirants now 2021 20, aspirants are also buying uh, and uh, like the revenues and all they went up and after that the biggest thing happened the lockdown thing came okay and you have to understand how important this is because before march 2020 online education was a very niche business it was inexistent none of you probably purchased any online course before that now probably some of you have some udemy course something you have like probably some of you have purchased that so the entire industry started developing after that thing okay obviously it was an unfortunate event and a lot of people suffered but a lot of students also suffered right offline coachings and all they had all stopped and online was the only option at that time right so i thought ki maybe it's time to double down even more and at this point i decided ki i was making enough money to hire some people and uh, i decided that i would step down from the teaching thing and i will do the business side of things and the operating side of things more okay so i stepped down from teaching uh, till now i was the only one creating courses i hired some teachers i hired uh, six teachers okay two for physics two for chemistry two for maths and i created an even more like it was like a full fledged course everything with test series and everything was there okay it was like a complete j preparation course and till now we were pricing at around 5000 6000 now this was at around 20000 rupees okay which was still very less compared to what other people charge at that time right at that time like companies used to charge 1 lakh rupees or so right uh, some companies even charge 2 lakh 3 lakh 4 lakh rupees for their online preparation i'm talking about offline okay so still it was very affordable but since you have to now pay teachers you have to now pay for servers and all so i had to increase the prices and we launched it at around 20000 so that did very well as well okay so till now it's a very simple business okay that is the key thing i want you to note it's just one thing a very simple business and focusing on just one thing one audience one product okay now i thought ki okay so the j business is now doing well how can i maybe do more and help more students and capture more market as well and i thought that you know 99 percent people who give j they don't end up in this room they end up in some other random colleges okay and you guys have facilities here you have nice professors you have nice peer groups you have tas you have all of these things but if you go to some lower like tier 3 colleges which like people call them tier 3 colleges if you go to those places they don't have any of these facilities there you have to rely on your own and all okay so i thought of creating an upskilling kind of thing for these students why did i start this again you have to see i had a very simple uh, philosophy in my mind a we already had j students as a customer base right so they give their j they go to college so now what is the most logical thing to do that you can maybe help those students study in their college as well okay like you just you just have to funnel them from this to that okay so we launched so i hired a few people who were good at uh, so i created six courses okay one was uh, c plus plus one was data structures algorithms one was uh, machine learning one was cyber security uh, like these six courses we created and mostly these are, are related to computer science why computer science not because i am from computer science because that is the thing people want to do most people want to do software careers okay even if i ask you ki how what what career you want most people will say ki we want to work in a tech company that's most people's wish right so that's why we launched a computer science or a software kind of a boot camp product and again most companies were selling the same product at 70000 80000 1 lakh 90000 this price range we launched the entire thing at what maybe 5 to 10000 a year that's it okay and it had monthly plans and all as well so now they started selling a lot as well and again we had a new market and a new business vertical and then in 2021 we thought what more can we do and then we launched two more divisions a junior division for students of class 9 10 and a neat division so are you seeing the funneling here first uh, like if someone is from 9th and 10th he can study with us if he chooses to go for j he can study in j if he chooses to go for neat he can study in neat and in j if he does if he goes to iit great 
if he doesn't go to IIT, he can go for our platform. And even if you go to IIT, you can, like many of you still study from online courses, right? So that is also an option, okay? So this is basically what we have done. And in 2022, the biggest focus was removing the personal side of things from this business, okay? So till now, if you look at it, a lot of you might be thinking that I succeeded because I had a JE rank one and I got famous because of it and that's why this business worked. This is far from true, okay? Because that first rank thing, it, it gave me a bit of fame, but it's a very limited thing. You have to carry it forward, okay? So you have to have some kind of a comparative advantage in the beginning, which I had. And from that, you have to take the journey and get ahead, right? So even being from IIT Bombay is a competitive advantage for all of us, right? So uh, you can start from that. And uh, so even then, this business was heavily reliant on me promoting the courses, me promoting the products, me publishing videos, me making blogs. So it was very dependent on one person. And this is not good for a business because, uh, you know, if that business is like, it's better to have a business that doesn't depend on you, okay? It, ha it should have proper systems and processes so that uh, even if you are absent, okay, so I am present here right now, right? But my business is working, okay? Even today we have sold our online courses. Why? I'm not present, I'm, I'm sitting here, right? Why? Because I have set up in 2022, the focus was on setting up systems and processes so that it works without me. So I will tell you some statistics. In 2021 beginning, 80% of our website traffic was from my social platforms, my YouTube channel, my uh, LinkedIn, something like that. Today, it's only 30%. Only 30% of our traffic is coming from my personal uh, social media and everything, it's like, and it's even going down. 70% of our customers discover us organically. Like they search for something key, JE preparation or coding course. And our course comes up on Google search or email or wherever they search, right? So this is what we have been working on. And this is a key principle which I always think about. What more can I do? Okay. First, I created a JE course. I thought, what more can I do? Then I created a better JE course. Then I thought, what more can be done? Then I created a course with more teachers and more features. Then what more can be done? Then I created a upskilling platform. What more can be done? I created a platform for junior students and for need students as well. What more can be done? Remove dependence of the company on yourself. Okay. Everything has been going very well. We have received a lot of acquisition and funding and all these offers. I cannot disclose names here for obvious reasons. Uh, but, and by the way, none of this has been done with any funding, zero funding. Everything has been done from scratch. I did not receive any kind of funds or loans or nothing. Okay. And it's a profitable company. Uh, we make money. We pay to whoever we owe expenses to and everything else is profit. Okay. Uh, so if I want to talk about two lessons, like the two biggest thing in business. Okay. They are just two things. If you do, do the, if you do these two things, you will do well. If you do anything else, like it doesn't matter. Do you have to do only two things? First, you should be in the right market. Okay. You have to be in the right market. I think it was point number one in the sheet, which showed, right? Why? Because everything is dependent on, on that, right? Why did I succeed? Number one reason is because I was in the right market. I was in the right market for JE preparation. And I also had a bit of luck in the whole lockdown thing, obviously, but I was in the right market. However, it was, I was in the right market. Okay. I ended up successful because I was at the right place at the right time. You have to be there. Okay. You cannot pick up a random inexistent market. Okay. So a lot of IITians have this tendency, ki, I will make a, I will make a robot that has machine learning and which uses blockchain on the moon to do some astronaut, something, something, something. Okay. Which like, kuch hai nahi bas aise. So don't do this stuff. Look for a meaningful market and build in that. Okay. You have to focus on getting the money and money exists in the market. Okay. Everything else doesn't matter. And the second learning, which I have for you, like once you choose the right market, second thing is marketing. Okay. You have to focus the most on marketing. Today, someone asked me, what is my biggest skill? I will not say it is computer science. I'm very good at computer science. Uh, I completed my degree one semester early. Okay. I'm, I know my computer science. I know my J. I know my physics. I know my maths. But if you ask me what is my biggest skill set, I would say it is my marketing skills. I know what to sell and how to sell it. Okay. That is the biggest skill set which I've developed. And this is, uh, and these two things have helped me the most in my business. I think uh, it has gone, uh, like this monologue has gone for a while. So I'll, Invite some questions. Thank you.
this is the first question which I get asked in any, so I go to a lot of colleges, right? And they all ask me, this is the first question they ask. What you're not understanding is, if there is competition, it's a good thing. I, does IITB have competition? Is there anyone who feels that IIT has competition? Nahi hai? Is there anyone who feels that IIT is a competitive place? Then why is everyone coming here? There is competition here, right? If there is competition, that means there is a demand for that thing. Okay, you have to understand this. The biggest companies, they exist in markets where there is a very large competition. Okay, if there is competition, that is a good thing because people want that thing. Agar people, if people do not want it, then there will be no competition, right? So that is a good thing if there is competition. Second, there are things you can do to survive. Okay, so I will tell you something. So if you remember, I told you something about ki we were the first to market in the online industry, right? If you look at all these companies like the one you have named, they all launched later in 2021 or so. I launched in 2017. I got incorporated in 2019. So I had a bit of, you know, uh, so I had accumulated some amount of cash by the time these companies started emerging. Ob obviously, there was a revenue hit when, so in 2020, for example, there was a revenue hit, okay. Our revenue in 2020 was like, it's, it was huge, okay. But then it dipped a bit because of the competition which emerged. Right, but in 2020, 2022 again it has risen by around 50%. We are growing 50% from last year to this year, okay, up till now. And the reason is because we have developed a lot of strategies to compete with that, okay. So, first is, so this is what I call first mover advantage. I, I don't think I would have survived, uh, like you mentioned, I don't think I would have survived if I started in let's say 2021. The reason I survived was because I had cash so I could hire teachers, I could launch cheaper courses, I could launch courses with less margin because I had some amount of money in the bank. So starting early definitely helps and there are other things you can do. But I would say don't worry about competition early on, okay, right now none of you have a working business, right? Unless you start making 20 lakhs a year, you, none of you should start worrying about competition, okay, that is my honest advice. I don't think there is a USP like if you purchase any other online course, that is mostly the same. So for example, if you stay in, so if you go to IIT Delhi or IIT Bombay, what's the USP of IIT Bombay? IIT Delhi is the same things, right? What's the USP of IIT Kanpur? It's the same thing, right? So once, like after a certain stage, once you are in that competitive, like you said, competition, right? So once competition comes into any field, everything will become commoditized, more and more commoditized, and everything will be same. There will be no difference. So for example, if I ask you, uh, like, you want to eat a samosa, will you eat it at Crescent or will you eat it at Gulmore? Now, like, there is not much of a difference, right? It is just a samosa, right, after all. So, something like that. Things do not happen in vacuum. It is not like one company will have 100% revenue, everyone else in the market will have zero revenue. It does not happen like that. Everyone has their own share uh, of revenue, everyone has their own, you know, piece of the pie and you can establish certain uh, marketing tactics and all to ensure this. That is the answer. To that. that actually saw worked out very well in the first year because at that time no one was doing it. But since then everyone saw okay, okay this guy he is making a lot of money by selling courses at less price. So then the price war starts, and a lot of companies nowadays do their J preparation for 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 rupees. But we are still not reducing our prices. Okay, our ticket price in 2020 was 4,000, 5,000 rupees like per customer 4,000, 5,000 rupees. Today it is around 8,000 rupees, okay. In 2022, average course sold is of rupees 8,000, okay. So our average price is increasing and this is a good thing for a business, okay. If people are reducing their prices and your business is still working at higher prices, it shows that you have some brand value with you, okay. So yeah, uh, adding to his discussion. What a lot of people in this classroom, okay, you have a very algorithmic mind, okay, which is good, which is good in a lot of ways, but it's also bad in a lot of ways, okay. So like in IIT everyone is following some algorithm, right? Ki 9th mein achche number lao, 10th mein achche number lao, phir 11th, 12th, phir IIT clear kar lo, phir CPI, POR, uh, second year internship resume, phir internship, phir third year internship preparation, then third year internship, then uh, what? Placement, interview and all, right? So everyone is following an algorithm here. And you have to understand that you can get only so much far ahead by doing what everyone else is doing, okay. So in this room like everyone will do, I am not saying you are all failures, you are all very successful people and all of you will be millionaires by the time you are 40, you are 35 or you are 50, everyone will be in this room, okay. So if there is anyone who is living in self-doubt, it is very easy to enter self-doubt in IIT Bombay in a competition like IIT Bombay 
but all of you will be super 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 ultra hyper successful when you are 35 40 but that's because you're following an algorithm and you are you are a exception like you are a very outlier kind of a person everyone in this room okay even the lowest cpi guy from metallurgy or whatever the lowest data department even that is an outlier okay so you will get ahead in life but you have to understand ki everyone will be a millionaire at 40 how can you become a millionaire at 25 there your algorithmic thinking will not work okay there you have to do something different why did i did well why i'm only 23 years old right now why did i do well because i did something different okay so back in 2018 i told you right i used to create uh, blogs i used to create videos at that time i was the biggest meme material in campus okay like the biggest laugh talk by what is this guy doing why is he like i remember this guy like this guy in csc only right he used to so i used to make some so i was making some data structure ka video for my youtube channel uh, so i had studied some in second year i had studied some data structures and i thought ki uh, revise bhi ho jayega and maybe it will be good for someone who's watching so i created some data structure tutorial i think it was a blog or something so i was typing and he looked at my laptop and he said bhai itna villa kaise hai tu okay this is and, and even what this laughter is uh, try to understand what i'm trying to say that guy he used to say ki main startup karunga startup karunga startup karunga and today he is doing a job okay and that will happen led to the startup okay so here you have to understand ki if you want to get ahead in the business world in business world everyone gets ahead by doing something different you cannot do the same thing and get ahead okay what you guys are doing is you are doing the same thing everyone is doing but you are outliers you are exceptionally intelligent people even people in tier 3 colleges are doing the same thing they are also preparing for j however they could not clear, clear, clear it you cleared it because you are an outlier okay then in college they are doing the same thing cgpa cpi uh, internship they are doing the same thing but again they cannot crack you can because you are outlier so in business world you all can succeed in business world but you will have to apply this outlier thing to something different and that different thing in the business world is marketing okay so uh, the lady over here she asked the question ki what's a usp okay 99% companies don't have a USP. They don't have any USP. So let me ask you, ki, for example, if you buy some local chips from some Mumbai ka thela wala, okay, and you buy some Lay's chips, they don't have any difference. Or Lay's wale mein hawa zada aati hai, right? And that, that, they, they even taste the same. But why is Lay's winning? Why is that thela wala still a thela wala? Why is Lay's winning? Because they have marketed themselves to such an extent ki, or a Lay's ka chips khana hai, right? So that is the different thing. So they don't have any USP, no difference here. But why is Lay succeeding? Because despite not having a USP, they have created a brand. They have marketed themselves very well. Okay. So that is the importance of marketing and about how you can do it. See, it's a very difficult answer to, like it's not an easy answer, but you get it by practice. Okay. So most of you have not interacted with anyone in real life. Aap just PTs or yehi bana rahe ho. If you go out and try to sell something, you will automatically learn ki how can I get, so you create some, let's say you start a SaaS company. Anyone knows what a SaaS company is? So if you start some software, $1.49 per month software, something, some email marketing or software, you all start. Anyone can, if I give a challenge, most of you will create a software app in two days. Okay, you are all capable. But then the biggest problem is no one will buy it. So you will automatically search ki how to sell my SaaS app. Then you will watch something ki, you know, you can do XYZ thing, you can do cold emailing, you can do SEO, uh, you can make videos on it, you can write blogs on it. There, there are several things. So you will automatically discover these things, okay. So it's more of a get in the field and you will learn it kind of a thing. So first thing, I didn't in participate in any of those tropes of resume creation, internships, placement. I didn't do any of those things. So that saved up a lot of time. And fitness, I didn't have much of a fitness, like, theek hai. So you saw that picture which sir used, right? Like the worst picture of mine that can be picked. So I used to, so I used to look a bit like that, okay. Uh, hai, ab nowadays I focus more on my fitness. Uh, but yeah, that was not a big of a, that big of a focus. Culturals I used to do a bit. I used to be a guitar player in college. I even won in a GC, I guess, in H4. So anyone from H4 here? Sub H4 wale aise hote hain, pe koi nahi hoga. Right. So in H4, like I won a prize and all as well. So culturals I used to do. Uh, but the biggest savior of time for me was that I didn't participate in, uh, you know, this placement and all these preps.
So that saved up a lot of time. So you have to decide, it's all about priorities. You cannot do 10 things. So I had it in my mind day one, ki I want to start a company. I don't know how I will do it. I'm ready to not have a salary, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I have to start a company, that was in my head, okay. So you have to have clear priorities. And it's perfectly okay that, you know, you don't want to start a company. Some of you are not made for that, some of you don't want to do it, it's perfectly fine. Uh, some of you might have heard ki this course gives you easy grades, so you have come here, I know that. But by the way, this is false, this is not an easy course. If you decide ki you have to start a company, you cannot have two choices. You will have to take the plunge. Yeah, so this was a bit easy for me because I had a following on LinkedIn. And, and, and this is the beauty of the company that I run, okay. Some of my customers like, for example, someone who purchased the course in 2020. Now those people are in their second year. So some of them have even interned with us, okay. I don't know if anyone, like maybe someone is sitting here as well. So I happen to be a bit lucky here because uh, I had a lot of followers on LinkedIn who are all students and engineers and all. So I didn't have much of a problem. But there are platforms like uh, that you can use for hiring. So that's not, see, all of you are asking very advanced questions, okay. Again, the algorithm thing, iske baad kya aega? First thing I would say, all of you can get to 20 lakh a year revenue by yourself. You don't need anyone for that. First get to that, after that you will automatically figure out ki hiring kaise karna hai, this, this, that. All of you, all of it you will figure out. I told you about two things, market and marketing. If you pick the right market and you pick the right marketing strategy, you will make money on day one. I started my business in a very sustainable way. I don't have anyone to answer to. I don't have, I have zero investors in my company, right? It's all run by me. So I don't have to tell anyone ki, are sir, I'm IIT to lecture dene ja I don't have to take leaves. Why? Because I built my business in a very sustainable way. First, I started making a few 10,000 rupees a month from blogging and YouTubing affiliate. So you see, I built it all slowly. Then I launched one course. Then I made some money. Then I launched some more courses. Then I hired teachers. So if you work systematically, you can, uh, you know, you don't have to worry. So uh, one thing which I suggest everyone who wants to be an entrepreneur is start some side hustle, something, kuch bhi. Start some blog, start some Instagram page, start some freelancing, do something so that you start making some money on the side. This will teach you a business skills because even in freelancing, you have to sell yourself. You have to sell your skill set, right? So we'll learn sales and marketing and you will start making money. And then these worries will go away because why didn't I sit for first year internship? Because uh, my friends were bragging, ki, oh, see, I got 30,000 ka internship. I, I, I thought ki, this, this kind of money didn't matter to me at that time, right? So if you have already been making money, then confidence apne aap aata hai. You don't have to then think of all these things, ki, this ho gaya, that ho gaya. That is one answer. Now, if you do it in a very risky way, ki, you know, you take some, so I think taking funding is still okay. But if you start some random BS business, some, something random. So a lot of people in IIT do this, okay. Some, something could be random. The most cool sounding thing that your engineering brains can think of, you start that with no customers, then obviously you will have these issues. So if you follow the proper methods, you will do well. I will tell you a simple rule, okay. You want the least possible interference in your business as is feasible, okay. If your company can run without any investors, why do you want investors, okay. Why do you want them? Some businesses cannot run without investors. You cannot start a SpaceX without investors. You cannot start a Amazon without investors. Okay. But some companies can be started with, without investors. So do that. Okay. And one thing which I suggest everyone is, ki, you know what my plan is? So Acad Boost, like it's, it's growing slowly. Okay. I will use the money which I make from this business to invest in and uh, start other more investment heavy businesses. Okay. Uh, so that's an approach you can take. So uh, one thing which I always like to tell people, by the way, what I do is a B2C business, okay? There are different types of businesses. So there's something called B2B business where you deal with companies, you deal with people like me, okay? So I do business with a lot of companies as well. So I told you, right, that there's a company that hosts our courses, right? So we pay them lakhs of rupees to, you know, host our courses. So everything I talk about is only relevant to B2C companies where you sell directly to customers, okay? Uh, this is a disclaimer which I didn't make. And coming to uh, Sir's question, so you had asked ki, we have a tendency to create a USP, right? How to avoid this? So one thing which I believe should be taught but isn't taught here is business is simple, okay? You have a funnel, you have some people coming in B2C business, okay? So let's say uh, you have some 
So everything is done via some kind of a post or a video or an email. Okay. So everything that you buy. So for example, you guys use Paytm app, right? How did you come to know of Paytm? You probably heard it from an email. You probably got a social media ad. You probably got it from a friend. Whenever you got it, like you got it from somewhere, right? So there are so so business is very simple. You have your uh, top of funnel. Okay. This is the people who hear about, let's say, Academus for the first time. Okay, from somewhere. So some of you will go and discuss in your hostel room. Ki, okay, today the Academus guy came. So that guy is entering the top of funnel. He heard, he heard, hears about Academus uh, for the first time. Then he hears for the second time, third time, just that. And then finally, some people will buy it. Okay, this percentage could be anywhere. It could be 10 percent. It could be 1 percent. It could be 0.1 percent. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. This is what a funnel is. Okay, if you get enough people here, and you keep on optimizing it, you will make sales. Okay, you will make money. This is this is like, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? This is just a ratio and proportion thing. So, if you have a USP, this percentage will increase. If so, when I started my first course, okay, then nobody was selling at low prices, right? Nowadays many people are, but at that time nobody was selling. So this percentage was maybe 30 percent. Okay, so let's say I got 10,000 people to view this uh, online course and 30% uh, it's a bit large number, let's say 10%. So now 10,000 people will purchase it. Okay, so what my suggestion to everyone is ki instead of focusing on USP, instead of focusing on anything, you can opt, see, eventually you want to make money, right? You want to make money. That is your end goal, right? So you can make money in any way. You can either increase, you can either make this 10 times. So instead of 10,000 people, 1 lakh people will view your product, okay? Let's say. Or you can 10 times your conversion rate, okay? So let's say you had only, you had 10,000 people only, but instead of 10%, 20% people start buying your courses, okay? And you can also adjust the price of the product, okay? So if you adjust all three of these things together, your money will increase. So you don't necessarily have to create a USP, you can focus on this, you can focus on this or you can focus on the price of the product, okay. So if you are a beginner, I would say much better than doing a USP is to increase this, okay. Why did my courses sell? Because I had 1 lakh people on my YouTube channel when I launched the course. I had 50,000 people visiting my website every month, okay. And even and today these numbers are even larger. Today I think our total YouTube subscribers are around 5 lakh and uh, so every day we get what like 70, 80,000 people or maybe around 1 lakh people view something related to Academist every day, okay. This is a this is a very difficult to achieve by the way, okay. A lot of companies cannot do this. Every day 1 lakh people hear about Academist in some way on YouTube channel, on blog, on Instagram, on Twitter, on ad, somewhere on uh, emails, on search engines. So now if 1 lakh people are viewing your product every day, someone will buy it. Maybe one person will buy it, maybe 10 people will buy it, maybe 100 people will buy it. So I would say ki USP increases the conversion rate. Much better ki aap isko bada. This is the easiest to increase, okay. So let's say uh, you are working on a SaaS app, okay. And uh, you rely on content marketing, ki you write blogs. Ki for example, you have an email marketing ka some, some tool automation okay email marketing automation you do okay it has no usp okay it is just like everything else okay no nothing new nothing sab kuch same hai. pricing everything is same okay but it will still convert if you send 1 crore people to your page to your uh, you know your uh, landing page someone will buy it right koi to na like you are sending 1 crore people to it someone will buy so you should focus on how can i increase this number okay so instead of writing one blog post every day, write 10 blog posts. That is what I would say ki initially much better to increase this than try to optimize this. Later on you can optimize this. So we have crossed this phase. Now we are in the process ki you know how can we increase from 9% to 9.5%. Some, something small we can do. Text change kar diya website pe. Pricing mein thoda fluctuation kar diya. So that was a very complicated answer. But I hope you understood what I am trying to say, right? Okay. If more people come in the market, so let's say initially 10% people who came to your website were buying your product. Then your Bagalwala friend, he also started the same business. Okay, he's a typical IITB SAP and he started <laughs> and, and, and he also started the same business. Okay, and let's assume that he's as good as you. 
okay let's say what will happen this will become 5% so now your job is to not focus on him okay you don't want to beat him up what you want to do is ki you increase this you make this double you increase your effort so this is very important nobody teaches this but this is very important for b2b b2c businesses has everyone understood this okay you can increase any of these three things a the number of people viewing your product b the percentage of those views that convert into a product sale and see the price of the product sale okay right now uh, we are optimizing all three so this year our this this view thing this impressions thing is like two or three times this year compared to last year our product like last year i think we sold around 6500 rupees average now it's around 8000 uh, we had a target ki dollar 100 hit karna hai okay so now this has also increased and optimization to chalti rehti hai it's a daily thing the uh, entrepreneurship course i think more important than the theory is the motivation that it provides okay so i hope ki at least one person out of this you know once like three or four years back i was also sitting in your seats only so i graduated in in 2021 okay so ha huh, 2021 i graduated my convocation was like three weeks back but i could not attend it but my convocation was three weeks back okay i am one of you guys okay some of you were probably in first year or uh, second year when i was in campus okay so i used to sit here and some people used to come and professor devdeep and everyone else they used to give their lectures so they inspire you they motivate you to start your own thing i think that is the most important part of the courses the see these theories and lectures you can you know ask professor for lectures they will give you all semester ka lecture you can study them at home that is fine but the biggest thing that you should do i will consider this session successful if tomorrow someone of you will take the plunge ki you will start something something you will start okay it doesn't have to be successful if you start something i would consider it to be the success for this particular course and this session as well yeah yeah that would be take a plunge that is the most important thing and you have a limit see once this course is over you will stop doing that okay you will once again go to your crib sessions ki ek number bad jaye do number you will start that again this is the time okay like i remember when i was in the ent course my first course was marketing one by professor devdeep right so we used to meet a lot and uh, we used to have a lot of discussions now we were working on something else by the way which did not like it was working but we did not do it because academus was doing so well okay so those meetings like i learned a lot uh, so uh, these things i learned from experience like you do then you learn but uh, there was a lot of inspiration there was a lot of you know heart to heart talk and there was a lot of uh, you know that taking the plunge thing i think that i learned a lot from the meetings and all from uh, professor so that is one thing that you should look forward to so we were working on something else okay for that i talked to like 100ish people but this academus thing i had been doing since my first year okay so by the time i had joined this course i think i had like what 80000 people on just youtube and maybe Two or three lakh people overall who were doing something, but I had not set up all of this at the at the time I joined. Okay, so there were lakhs of customer. If that's the answer. See, so I run a B two C business. Okay, and B two C business ki yehi sab kuch hai. Like this is everything you need to know about a B two C business. You have to increase, increase, increase these three things. So obviously nowhere it's written ki you need to be in Lipka book or you need to have J E rank one or you like none of this is required for this. I would say it gives you a certain confidence. Okay, so uh, I remember when I was in IIT, uh, and this is something I wanted to talk about. Okay, so if you take placements in IIT, what is the highest thing you can achieve? Like what's the most you can achieve? You will get a package at let's say Microsoft. Like that's the highest, right? इससे ऊपर कुछ है? कुछ नया कंपनी आ गया हो लाइक it's the maximum right let's say it's at around what 55000 right 55 lakhs so microsoft uh, package it's 55 lakhs are you aware ki anyone in nits can also get the same package are you aware of that like aisa to nahi lagta ki iit mein hi aate they come to every college okay and in every college there are people who make 55 lakhs okay so what's to so what did you do back why did you work hard to be in iit if you can get the same thing in nit right i'm not questioning any of you i'm not saying iit is a uh, you know it's i'm not questioning any of that but this is a very open question okay if any of you have an answer you can give ki same guy from nit you can get the same package in fact if you join nit nits are not bad by the way okay nits are also good if you join nit you can get the same package and you would be the topper there 
the 7 CGPA guy here would be probably a 9 pointer at NITs, right? So, why did you do this? Okay. So, you have to justify your admission in IIT Bombay. And I had a bigger chip on my shoulder because I have to justify rank 1. Now, you know, if I was doing a job in Microsoft, it is good, I am not saying it is bad, but then I am J rank 1 and then some NIT ka fellow is also working with me in same company, I would feel bad personally. Okay, you can call me arrogant or whatever, but this is my personality. Okay, so I have to justify this. So you have to do something different. Okay, now the thing about running a business is, okay, let us say you start a business which is making the same revenue. Okay, so you do not join Microsoft, you run a business that makes 55 lakhs. I am not even talking about profit, I am talking about let us say revenue. So if you make 55 lakhs, let us say you have a profit of 15 lakhs. Okay, this is more valuable than this. Because this business can be sold, it will have a certain equity value. So, how many of you know something about the share market? Something you know, right? So, you know that business has a valuation which is more than its revenue, right? It is a multiple of its revenue. So, this business will be valued at what? Maybe 1 crore, 2 crores depending on the industry. So, this business is not valuable like this. It is valued like this. So, there is a benefit of running a business. There are tax benefits. Lots of things are there. So, that is why running a business is always better than doing a job and let us say by some somehow you manage to get a profit of 55 lakhs. That is an even bigger thing because now your business is valued at maybe tens of crores. Okay. So, this is the power of running a business which and these things nobody talks about. Okay, Everyone talks about uh, deep uh, customers and all but these things are also important you to understand these basics of finance and all these things as well. So, that was the answer to my question that I had to justify myself ki bhai, I cannot do the same thing that someone else with a lesser achievement than me can do. I would feel bad about it. And even now I think ki, you know, if there is someone I see ki, okay, this guy is doing better than me. So I try to see ki, how can I, you know, get ahead of him, something like that. So maybe it is a personality thing, but it, I had this in me. And I think more people here should have that in them. In a healthy way, obviously, you should not, you know, damage yourself for your mental health because you want to get ahead of everyone that is obviously not good. This is another thing I wanted to talk about someday and today that day has come. So in colleges there is a tendency for people and in school to become well rounded. Okay, You want to be good at singing, you want to be good at coding, you want to be good at NCC, you want to be good at sports, you want to do everything. But in business you succeed by doing one thing. You do one thing but you do it very well. Okay, So look here. Most businesses have enough people here that can make you any amount of money you want. You don't want to make everyone else's money. You want to make money for yourself. Okay. So I'm not interested in someone who doesn't want engineering. If you are a staff person, nice to meet you, but you are not my target customer. Okay. We can be friends, but we cannot have a business relationship. Okay. So my target customer is someone who wants either JE courses, either NEET courses, either school courses, or someone in college who is looking forward to learn coding or software okay that, that that's my audience if you want to buy some samosa if you want to buy some you want to book a hotel you want to have a flight that's not what i do you can go to indigo or wherever i do only this and this can make you enough money like uh, choose the market well and you can do well in it uh, see you don't have to uh, think start small and keep growing from that start making some money this is why i advise all of you ki, do something, do some freelancing, do some something, Do you, you start making some money, even if it is 1000, 2000 rupees, it is okay. Start making some amount of money, from there you will see the path, ki bhai, I, I can earn 1000 rupees, so now what can I do to make 10,000 rupees, I can make 10,000 rupees, so then you will automatically know ki bhai, aage kya karna hai. okay, so that is the answer. Yeah. So now here is one offer to the students, maybe if any team wants to volunteer, Burgess since you went last, Okay, if you want to volunteer and share your plans or Jasper and your team, if you want to just share your plans, you can get live feedback from Kalpit. Kalpit, are you okay to just give feedback as some of the students share with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, are you I okay with that? that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So you can just stand there wherever you are and yeah. make yourself comfortable no, no, I'm so that you don't have, but, you know, you can, you can sit down. Um, any volunteers, any team, you can share who your, so my recommendation is just share who you, who your customer is, who your, you know, what exactly you're trying to do with the customer and what are your plans to make, you know, grow your business. And then you can get some live feedback. One of you can come, the team can come, but let's make it interactive. 
and the rest of the team can also come if you want. We are working uh, on an online platform called Withstand Fitness. Okay. And our plan is um, to hire um, sports dropouts and conduct online courses, mm -hmm. a bit like your a bit like your business, just for fitness. fitness. Yes, exactly. So you can get like nutrition plan, working workout plan, and personalized uh, feedback from professionals. Yeah. And our main customer, as of now, uh, we might be able to find some other customers, depending on who we talk to, and there might be other market opportunities. But right now, it's it's people who don't have like the comfortable time and space to go to a regular fitness center. That could be, for example, pregnant women. It could also be people with children. You, if you have children, you don't just leave the house for two hours to go to a fitness. Then it's really easy to like do something simple like that online, and you can just do it from home. And it's professional, and it's working. And what's going to be the revenue model? How will you make money? Like, what, what do you sell? We, as individual. Like, what do you sell? So, so basically, we are selling home fitness lessons. So, so uh, is it a subscription product? Is it bought one time from the website? Yeah, it is basically like a subscription product, okay. and we are basically targeting uh, the NRIs, non-resident Indians. Okay, yeah. Answering your question, I think the niche is very nice because fitness is a rising industry. So that guy asked about fitness, right? I think he asked about fitness, uh, my fitness. So back three years back, nobody used to ask in IIT fitness, nobody. But nowadays they do. That means people in India now care more about their fitness, okay? They care about their calories, they care about the gym and all that, right? So I think it's a rising industry, so that's good. The market is good. About the target customer, I would say pick one customer. Either pick pregnant women, pick babies or small kids, pick adults, pick one or pick students. I think students is a good category to aim at, okay? Pick one thing. Don't run after five, six markets. See, I did this for only one thing for like two years. After that, I expanded to other things because, you know, this thing was getting saturated. Now I had to optimize, like I had to bring more people to the funnel now, right? So that you can do later on. First, start making money from one kind of a customer. Otherwise, I think the market is good. If you do well in your marketing, uh, maybe collab with some fitness influencers or maybe start writing some fitness blogs or maybe you can start thumbnails and make videos and then post some, like do something and market well, you will do well. I think it's a good business to be in. Basically, we are trying to not just be a fitness like a company. We are trying to be like a good health buddy. Like we are trying to be like bring in a lifestyle brand, not just you know. Yeah, I would say don't do that. Be a fitness company only. Don't start off. I started as just one thing, J company. J may be crash course company, not J full company. J crash course. That's it. I sell online J courses. Nothing more. Okay. Sell only one thing. Once you start making money, let's say you reach uh, 10 lakh or one crore per year revenue, then think of starting to become a good health company okay first i was a j company then i became a education company okay don't expand early i think you guys have a good idea but you'll have to work on keeping him in india okay or you will have to go to denmark so think about that i'm tejasvi and ours is basically in the real estate market there is usually nowadays there's this model where the people buy a bit of land from agricultural most mostly and they make it into a layout venture and uh, they make plots and sell it to people. But as they expand this, they need more of uh, venturing out to people and reaching more people. For okay. that, they contact agents usually mm. who are like just normal people who take this as a part time thing. And if they make one sale, they get a commission on each part, each uh, like square yard of Real land that they sell. Real estate brokers basically. Yeah. yeah okay. Not exactly brokers by profession, but normal people who go out into their network and talk to them and convince them to buy. They usually have their other job and everything, but they just get a commission on this, so they work with the sellers. So our plan is to make a platform of connecting these agents to the uh, sellers of the land. First of all, not a good segment to be in. I will tell you an interesting story if people have time. So real estate industry, you want to avoid that. Okay, first thing. Because there's a lot of hassles, uh, there's a lot of shady things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of trouble in real estate industry, so I would like to stay away from it, okay? So I recently made a real estate something something, so uh, thoda iska idea hai ki it's not a good thing to be in. But 
द गुड थिंग अबाउट इट इज की रियल एस्टेट इज अ इस्टेब्लिश इंडस्ट्री एवरी वन विल बाई रियल एस्टेट ओनली गेटिंग एक्सपेंसिव ओके सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट्स अ गुड मार्केट टू बी इन बट यू विल हैव टू डू अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच आई एटीएंस कैन नॉट डू ओके सो दे विल बी धक्का मुक्की दे विल बी लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स ओके इन रियल इस्टेट मार्केट आई डोंट नो इफ इट्स डिफरेंट इन हाई एंड मुंबई रियल इस्टेट इट कुड बी बट रियल इस्टेट इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स दैट यू नीड अ लॉट ऑफ जुगाडू पर्सन काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन टू डील विथ यू कैन नॉट डू इट यू नो इट्स नॉट सिंपल कि यू गो टू समन कि आई वॉन्ट टू बाई लैंड इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट ओके सो दैट्स वन थिंग यू नीड टू कंसिडर ओके you need some experience in this to pull this off basically i want to ask that i already have this thing with me like i am also doing youtube and i have like 86000 plus subscriber as of now and it is growing uh, day by day so, but what i fear is i don't i don't know how to start and how to do all these things which which industry do you have uh, like i am also in the same industry as you but i am not into teaching or uh, the uh, i don't want to teach like i don't want to sell them courses i actually i want to be like uh, be like a bridge because many students uh, apart from academics also have doubts also have queries so okay. i want to be in that niche okay so i am going to ask him a very important question which you should listen why do you not want to teach like why simple question i do have interest in that but i feel i could do better in other field yeah so i think the reason you don't want to teach is because you think that you are an iit bombay guy and teaching is we need you thoda sa hoga shayad maybe that's why you're not interested uh, no not actually but no, I, you don't answer to me answer this to yourself okay because uh, this is a problem with a lot of people ki they cannot do small things they have to and they have to first do they directly sabko yahan pe elon musk banna that is something which i have noticed so that doesn't happen so uh, i'm not saying i'm not accusing you but if that is the case with you you need to correct on that second i would say ki don't enter this i'm not saying this because i'm doing the same thing i'm saying this because now it's not possible 2018 mein uh, there was only one kalpit now there are many people actually i don't have the same uh, business model or same thing that you are doing I, uh, it is completely different it's like if a student is there in class 11 12 or say 9 10 uh, they all have doubts regarding everything not about only academics so i want to cater uh, apart from academics things like those things i would say this is an inexistent market i don't see people doing it are people doing it ah uh, yes they are doing okay, it okay like what give me example like, of a company there are people from different nits who have started this and they are doing well doing what i didn't even get what i like okay. mentorship kind of thing mentorship actually professor devdeep and i tried to create a mentorship platform like back in 2018 but this was doing well so we did this i think it's a good business even i wanted to do it at some point of time Yeah, I think it's a good business. You can. I just think. want to ask uh, you that I do have this, and it is going like immensely. But but but, but there's a, there's an issue. If you want to do this, then focus on your YouTube. If you want to do what you're doing, then this is not the probably not the best thing to do. Okay, probably not the best thing to do. You can maybe you want to do more life coaching kind of content if if that's what you want to do. Mentorship because the most people what people ask for mentorship is mental health, fitness. Uh, studies ka i don't think anyone wants mentorship there are lots of people doing it i think this is where people want mentorship in you know life coaching kind of things so a lot of people want life coaching and all content right so maybe you can work towards that if you are building this kind of a content i would say it will not suit the product well so if you can make that kind of a content maybe that can be good just because category wo exist karti hai life coaching is a category fitness coaching is a category mental health consultancy professional advice you have to take care of that medical consultations if you can build something along those lines i think it's a good way to go thank you one more question uh, if one wants to start uh, what are the things that he needs to keep in his mind while starting or before starting uh, as i have answered first of all just start okay once you start making money you will automatically get answers and this is my answer to everyone first reach 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs a year this much you should reach as itians otherwise package hi le lo na right you, like you will all get 40 50 lakh packages so if you are not making that much money you will go for placement right that's the logical move i didn't go for placement because this was doing better than that okay so first reach that amount of money and then you can you know have these questions ki aage kya kare then you will automatically get these answers sure. yeah. thank you so much thank you and i think he deserves a huge round of applause